Okay, so now that you've mastered the concept of limits, let's see if we can um, teach you a little bit about what it means for a function to be continuous at points or over an interval. The first thing we want to talk about for continuity to determine if a function is continuous, we're going to talk about the formal definition of continuity at a point. Now in a minute I'll actually give you this in layman's terms, but right now let's talk about it in formal terms. Let's say C is a number in the interval A to B. So in other words, C is between A and B. And let F be a function whose domain, domain would actually contain the interval A, and, A to B. Now the function F is going to be continuous at the point C if the following three conditions are true. Now all three of these conditions have to be true for a function to be continuous at C. Okay, so let's look at number one. Number one says that when you evaluate the function at C, it must be defined. So what that simply means is if you plug C into the function, you should get a real number. Okay, so that's number one. Now, number two, says that if you evaluate the limit of the function as x approaches c, it must exist. So what does that mean? That just means that when you evaluate the limit as x approaches c, it should equal some real number. Now, those two alone don't prove that the function is continuous at x equals c. You've also got to have the third condition. The third condition basically says that condition number one and condition number two have to lead you to the same value. So f of c has to equal some number, the limit of f of x as x approaches c has to equal some number, and if those two numbers are the same number, so if the limit is equal to the functional value, then we have continuity at the point c. Okay. So the best way to show you examples of continuity is to look at uh, ways a function cannot be continuous at a point or at a value on the x-axis. So let's look at these three graphs for x equals c. Now if you look at the first graph, you'll see that you know this is x equals c. And if you look at the graph, you'll see there's a hole here. So, so there's no y value for c. Well, if there's no y value for c, in other words, if x has no corresponding y value on the graph, then the function is not defined at c. So since f of c is not defined, part a, or actually I should have said part 1, part 1 here fails. Okay? So part 1 fails in this case. Now, Let's go ahead and look at this graph over here. This graph here, notice this graph is defined at x equals c. It's actually defined to be a. See how I colored it in there? So that means that at x equals c, you're going to actually get this y value a. So f of c is defined. f of c actually equals a. Okay, but let's take a look at what happens if you try to do number two. So number one passed, but what about number two? Well, number two says the limit must exist. Okay, well, let's see. Notice if you approach C from the left, if you approach C from the left, notice that the graph gets infinitely, gets closer and closer to the value A. But if you approach from the right, the graph actually gets closer and closer to this value b. Well, that means that the left-hand limit, in other words, the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left is a, and the limit uh, as x approaches c from the right would be b, and a and b are two different numbers. Now, if, if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are two different numbers, then what that tells me is that the limit does not exist as x approaches c. And since the limit does not exist, part b or part 2 up here fails. So therefore the limit does not exist, so therefore this function is not continuous at x equals c. 
Okay, let's look at another one. Here, the functional value is defined. See, right here, at C, we get A. We get this value right here, A. So F of C is, is right here. It's A. F of C equals A. So the function is defined. Okay, well, let's talk about the limit. Well, if we approach C from the left, it looks like the Y value is going to get closer and closer to this number B. And if we approach from the right, the same thing. The Y value is going to get closer and closer to B. So what we've determined there is the following. So what I've shown you is that the limit of the function as X approaches C from the left is B, and the limit of the function as X approaches C from the right is B. So therefore, the limit of the function is actually B. Okay, so let's take a look down here. The limit of the function as X approaches C is B. Okay, so... We do have the first condition satisfied. F of C is defined. It's actually A. The limit exists. The limit is actually B. But are the two equal? Well, no, the two are not equal because the functional value is A, but the limit is B. And so the limit uh, does not exist. So the limit, um, with a typo there, the limit does not exist okay and I'm sorry I did I didn't say that right the limit does exist but and phi and f of c is defined but the two are not equal therefore part c fails okay so let me say that again the limit does exist but the limit is b f of c does exist but f of c is a since f of c is a and the limit is B, they're not equal, so therefore we have that this function is not continuous at X equals C because the third condition here fails. I wanted to go back to this one and just make a note. Um, I removed this right here, so now the function does not exist. So here, if both of these are open, then the function does not exist at C, so it would fail the test immediately. So, or the function would not be defined at C, so it fails the test immediately. And and even if both of these had been colored in, you know, well, you couldn't color in both of them because then it wouldn't be a function. But either if either this one is colored in, or if say that one is colored in, then what happens there is the same thing doesn't matter which one but if either one of these is colored in then the limit does not exist so therefore the function would not be continuous at c so you know there's there's you know several different examples we could show you there now in layman's terms basically there's a little trick you can do it basically says if you can take your pencil and trace the graph without picking your pencil up then the function will be continuous. But you'll notice if I try to trace this graph, I have to pick my pencil up at C in order to continue. So, so that would not be, this function would not be continuous at C basically for that reason. And now this is a very informal approach, but here's another one. If I tried to trace this graph, okay, now I would, to finish the graph, I would have to pick my pencil up and go up here finish tracing the graph okay and then over here I would have to once I got to here I'd have to pick my pencil up and then go down here and plot this point and then pick my pencil up again and plot this point or plot this part of the graph so on each of these um, in order to trace the graph you have to pick your pencil up at C so that's an informal way to determine that this graph is not continuous at x equals c. Now, there is another example. Suppose x equals c had been a vertical asymptote. Okay, so suppose we had a vertical asymptote like this. Let's say x equals c is that vertical line. Well, if we had a vertical asymptote and you tried to trace the graph, you could trace this side, but then you would eventually have to pick your pencil up 
and then get over here and trace this side. So obviously um, the function wouldn't be continuous at a vertical asymptote as well. And the reason it wouldn't be continuous is really because, number one, uh, the function would not be defined at a vertical asymptote. So that's, uh, you know, the, that's the formal reason why the function is not defined or not continuous at a vertical asymptote. So what I just showed you was basically in simple terms. Now, don't try to use this as a proof on an exam, um, but it does help you see it. So what I just said, if you can trace the graph over over an interval, sorry, that was just see an interval. If you can trace the graph over an interval with a pencil without picking up the pencil to continue, then the graph must be continuous over that interval. And I showed you in the examples above that you could not trace the graph without picking your pencil up at C at each of these examples. Okay, now if you look down here, um, this graph, if you look from A to B, well, this graph from A to B, you can actually trace the graph from A to B without picking your pencil up. So in that case, we would say this function is continuous um, over the interval from A to B. Now here's a couple of things you can kind of put in your bank and just keep it as a reminder. Polynomial functions are continuous at all real numbers. So if I gave you a polynomial function and it says, where is it continuous? Well, it's continuous at every real number because it's continuous for all values in its domain, and its domain contains all real numbers. Um, rational functions are continuous at every number within their domain. So if you look at this rational function, the only number that's not in the domain would be x equal 5 halves. So therefore, this function is continuous at all real numbers except x equal 5 halves. And then if you look at this one, this one is continuous for all real numbers except those that are outside of the domain. So let's talk about what's not in the domain of this number. Well, we know x can't be 0, x can't be 3, and x can't be negative 5. So therefore, the function is continuous at all real numbers except 0, 3, and negative 5. Now, this isn't true for all rational numbers. I mean, some rational numbers can be continuous for all real numbers. Like, for instance, if you take a look at this one, this rational function is continuous for all real numbers. And the reason is, is because there's, there's no way that x squared plus 5 could equal 0. And so there's no restrictions on the domain. So therefore, this rational function is continuous for all real numbers. So basically, polynomial functions are continuous at everywhere or for all real numbers. And rational functions are continuous for all real numbers that are within their domain. Okay, I'm going to wrap up part one of this section with three examples. This function, all three of these functions are discontinuous or not continuous at one. This function is not continuous at one because you have a vertical asymptote at x equal one. This function is not continuous at one because you have a break in the graph at one. And then this function is not continuous at x equal one because you have a hole in the graph at x equal 1. So those are the reasons that each of these functions. Now, if you want to know what definition, which part of the definition they don't satisfy, well, this function is not defined at x equal 1. Uh, this function is not defined at x equal 1. And this function is not defined. So none of the three functions are defined at x equal 1. Um, in order to find functions that are defined at x equal 1, and where we have to consider you know, look further to determine continuity, we generally have to use some sort of piecewise function, and I'll look at those piecewise functions in the uh, next uh, video.